ladies and gentlemen, I'm Paul Tanino Braun, and this is another damn review show. Because fuck you, you'll watch it. So here we are, another damn trailer reaction show. And what are we going to watch today? Well, we are going to watch the trailer for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which, okay, I'm a minute. I love that idea. I love that title. I, I like that we, uh, as a society, have just moved away from numerical sequels, which, boy, does that make things really annoying when you're trying to categorize and organize your movies. Do you do it in alphabetical order? Do you do it in order of release? Help me. These are the things that keep me up at night. But here we are. The Beetlejuice sequel finally happened. Does it take place in Hawaii at a vacation resort like the original sequel idea? No. Does anyone know what the fuck I'm talking about? Also probably no. Probably worth the Google. So it's the second time in the 2020s that Michael Keaton, he's come back. He's come back to reprise a famous role. Now, do we want to sit and watch me talk about this shit? No, we want to watch me watch the trailer. So in the words of Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice, let's get nuts. I'm Batman. God, I'm pissing off so many people I can already fucking tell. <laughs> oh, that's a good music choice. Oh, wow. I guess um, I didn't really pay attention to the leaks. I'm guessing they actually went back to the original town that they shot it in. I love Catherine O'Hara. This is one of the only roles, I feel like, that she did that was super mainstream where she got to be fucking nuts. All that nostalgia. These fucking legacy sequels. He's motherfuck. Look at him. The juice is loose. So. Obviously, very light on content there, which is fine. It is, after all, just a teaser. So, you know, I don't expect them to be throwing a whole bunch of shit at us plot-wise, more of just a tone piece. Love the use of, uh, of Deo. That's very, very funny. Mr. Belafonte, RIP. Is he dead? I don't know. Fucking probably, though. So how do I feel about a Beetlejuice legacy sequel? More importantly, how many goddamn legacy sequels is Jenna Ortega going to be in? I don't know, but hopefully a bunch because she's actually great. I'm a fan. I like her. She's got a very morbid, like, thing going on. Uh, casting her as uh, Lydia's daughter. Probably good casting. Probably good casting. One of the only things that's like a touch confusing for me is I wonder how they're going to address a couple things. Thing number one. Where is uh, Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin? Where are they? They were ghosts. I'm sure they'll vaguely explain it. Maybe, I, I, you know, they were tethered to that house. Number two, this is just a nitpicky thing for me. Beale just kind of ended and there was a little bit of like a personality shift in Lydia where she was a little bit more. We'll go with mainstream, a little less gothy at the end of that. She seems to have reverted back to her old ways and uh, that's fine with me. I am here for Winona Ryder's MILF era. I'm very here for it. I've got problems. But I'm really excited to see Catherine O'Hara back. Like I said, it's so funny that so much of like the public really knows her as you're the, the, the mom from Home Alone. And it's like, that's just such a straight man role for her. I think that Schitt's Creek really helped expose a whole generation to the fact that Catherine O'Hara is fucking funny. She's profoundly funny and she is so good at playing a weirdo and Delia Dietz is one of just the most unhinged characters she's ever played just go back and rewatch Beetlejuice and see how often she like repurposes clothing that other people wear earlier in the film in just truly bizarre ways like she wears a fucking sweater as pants at some point she's great I just love her I'm stoked to see her back so my only like real concern and it's a concern that has been somewhat stemmed uh, due to some recent stuff is uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton is obviously 
a fucking legend. He, he He's an icon. The man has made some truly incredible films. He is somebody I would consider an auteur. Like, you know, when you're watching a Tim Burton movie, he also has only made like two good movies in the last 20 years, which would be Sweeney Todd and Big Eyes. Uh, I haven't seen Big Eyes, but if it's IMDb and letterbox scores or anything to be taken into account, people seem to like that one. But apart from that, he really hasn't done a great movie in a long time. And he's just been very reliant on like ugly, poorly done CGI. I'm getting a little bit more of a sense of like practical stuff in this movie. It feels a little more tactile. You know, we we see that they're actually shooting in a real town. They have real sets. And that's already helping me. Honestly, one of the only things giving me hope that this could be good is I genuinely enjoyed Wednesday. I actually thought Wednesday was one of the better things he's done in a while. And he clearly knows how to, to like channel Jenna Ortega as an actress. So I think that this might be good. It's so nice to like have a positive response to something. It's also just once again, very funny. Here's Michael Keaton in the last three years, just reprising iconic roles, just doing all the fan service for people. You're a good man, Michael Keaton. You know, the only person we're missing in this movie is, is, is Jeffrey Jones. Where's the dad? Where's Papa Dietz? How come Jeffrey Jones didn't return for this movie? Was he held up with something else? Is he maybe not allowed to work on film sets with children? Don't know. Probably worth the Google. But I want to hear your thoughts. What do we think about uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, legacy sequel? Uh, like, you know, after what, 30 years, right? Bringing it back. Are, are you guys excited? I'm personally excited. Is the third one just going to be called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? I kind of low-key hope that happens. It would make me laugh a little bit on the inside. And I'm a jaded old fucker. So that would be impressive if they could make that happen. And before we end, I just want to take a moment and say, hey, guys, thank you for all the love on my Crow reaction uh, trailer reaction video and the we need to talk about the the crow thing it was really cool to like just engage in some really good conversation and boy are a lot of people pissed off about that movie like whoa i thought i was n negative and i was genuinely trying to be like somewhat optimistic but man a lot of folks aren't happy about that one maybe we'll uh all agree that this is a much better trailer with a person with a white face who's dead and coming back to life, sort of, kind of, not really. Everything is cyclical. And that's all I got to say. That's all I got. All I got for this one. So, leave some comments. Possibly subscribe. Uh, hit the thumbs up. And there's allegedly a bell. I do not know what it does, and I don't give a shit. I have been, and will continue, to be Paul Danina Braun, and this has been another damn review show. Because fuck you. You'll watch it. Had a nice coffee hidden right outside of frame this whole time. There's a whole fucking world outside this box. You don't even know about it. You don't even know, Andrew. That's the like seven people and Andrew are watching. We're just like, oh fuck, he he's got me. He's got my number. It's goddamn right I do.